to our Morning Thurners podcast. I'm Nelson. I'm Jeff. I'm Kyle. And we're the fucking Morning Thurners. And welcome back to another episode of your favorite Song of Ice and Fire podcast. We're the Morning Thurners podcast 28G. And this is brand six, baby. Good one. I like this chapter. Kyle, what do you think? Yeah, it was solid, man. Like a... I texted you, so I had read the first line, and then I was like, "Oh fuck, I should have made a better prediction." <laughs> so I figured, then I, uh, I figured you were uh, you were at least a, a line or two in when you made that prediction. Yeah, like one in. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's an unfair advantage. Well, um, I figured you. I figured just the fact that you knew the next chapter was Brand told me you at least had your book open when you were making that prediction. Yeah. Because most of the time you don't know who it is, so you open the book. Well, yeah, we talk about it at the end, but I mean, it was almost too. Well, what was your prediction? Let the let the fans know what you. Little late, but pre-read prediction is Bran wargs into a wolf and fucks up Dion's dudes. Dion Which lives because he only had like four chapters. That was right. It's the start of him believing the frog kid, which is also pretty right. Yeah, yeah, he's he's putting together pieces on that, which that I didn't get from here. But, um, what was I gonna say? Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of that can still come true, but it wasn't. Exactly wasn't this, this time. chapter though. Yeah, so. maybe Brand Seven. It was good. I always like the parts of the chapter where, like, you're in Summer's head. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a different perspective for sure. I thought it's uh, like I don't think it'll take us too long to talk about this chapter. I don't think so either. Even though it's probably about the same length as the last one, I feel like it's more. He's Summer, then he's in his room, then he's in the throne room, right? Cat was yeah. all over the place there. I mean, like the Summer chapter, really, like he's running around the Godswood trying to climb a tree. Yeah, but there's a, there, it's which is weird because wolves don't do that, right? That's like a it's weird because like that's a brand thing. Brand's one that likes climbing. Wolves would like a normal. Well, it was wolf very obviously try that. Brand was the voice, I'm pretty sure, right? Like that was my opinion at least, and maybe you can't answer that, but well, I, so it's weird because there's like let's we can get into it, but there's also like a whisper that's like hitting summer. So I like took it like yeah. summer, like summer's the narrator and Brand is the whisper, but then there's certain points like summer wouldn't even think to go climb a tree. It's just not a wolf thought. That's a brand. That's, that's what I'm saying. Thing. So the yeah. whisper and summer are both brand. I, I kind of, yeah, it's kind of what I got to by the end of it. I, I mean, going forward, I don't remember if this is totally like the voice is, is or, half or and not, half but and the whisper is brand. Yeah. That's kind of how I saw it. Yeah. Like, like, I kind of wonder if Summer has any of her own thought process, like to the point where it's like, I'm smelling my brother. Like, is that yeah, brand exactly. or is that's, that summer? That's a and summer then it's thought. like, oh, wait, I can go behind this sentinel and climb up. Cause I think I remember when Bran like first climbed, he was yeah. like, oh, this great sentinel, it leans up so I can basically climb it like a stair or like, yeah, like a ladder. ladder. And yeah. So, which, uh, which it is said again in this chapter. Yeah, yeah exactly. So. Like, Summer thinks it. Yep. So real quick before we get into it, I'll say I'm just going to read the quote that Jojen had before that's basically coming okay. to fruition in this chapter. So from that other chapter, I'm not actually sure which one, which chapter it was, but uh, the quote is, I dreamed that the sea was lapping all around Winterfell. I saw black waves crashing against the gates and towers, and then the salt water came flowing over the walls and filled the castle. Drowned men were floated in the yard. When I first dreamed the dream, back at Greywater, I did not know their faces, but now I do. Now I do. That ale belly is one. The guard who called out our names at the feast. Your Septon's another. Your Smith as well. So he, he calls out ale belly, Septon Shale, and Smith, which is Micken. So we'll see. We'll, we'll keep that in mind as we read through the chapter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll get <laughs> I was going to ask you to say what that was because I forgot what it was, what each one was. I remember one drowning, right? Like they was staying away from all the water. and Yeah, they all were. That was the whole thing because Micken even was like, well, I could swim. Yeah, so. Mickey, most of them took it as, as a joke, except for Ale Belly, who I kind of take as like a stupider guard, right? Like Mickey was like, oh, is the sea going to come to me? It's a good thing. I, I always wanted to see the sea. It's a good thing it's coming out of like most people like were like, oh, Brand does like no one actually took it seriously, except for Ale Belly, who didn't bathe for long enough that he got stinky and gave him like a rough bath. And then he, yeah, he got yeah. pissed at Brand because he thought it was just a joke. Right. Mm. So by the end, like nobody really believed Ale Belly believed for a little bit. Uh, but yeah, most people are just like, oh, Bran's a little kid. He had a so dream. I did want to say that I, I do like the um, the confusion of the summer parts of the chapter with like where she's like the man rocks or whatever, the man caves. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck like were the man? Like, oh, that's, that's a house is what that is. It's a building. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what caves the, of piled uh, stone. Yeah, man building, rock. Right? <laughs> Piles of man rock were dark and dead. I was like, what the fuck is that? And then I like was like, oh, it's. Yeah, I feel so. What's cool is I feel like Kyle was like you had this predicted basically from the last Theon chapter. I don't know 
I would guess most people probably get this one, right? See that Theon's coming to Winterfell and would expect that at some point. Like, it probably didn't take you long into this chapter until you're, you're like, I mean, even you, you basically predicted to us, you said one line in, like, Theon's coming this chapter, right? Well, yeah, so, the thing is the clink scraping the steel of their stone. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I just wonder, like, how many people read this whole summer part? Like, when you're in your first read, how many people, like, I might have, right? Cause I bet, I'm sure, I'm sure I did. And I was right, like, because we're not going, going through it as. You're not even really even thinking. You're just kind of reading about stuff. Like, how, I bet you a lot of people get through this first summer part without even being like, "Oh, it's Theon." And then when Theon like shows up in Bran's room, that's when you're like, "Oh fuck!" It's that's when most people might be like, "Oh shit, it's Theon." I wasn't ready for him to be in the in the castle already, to be honest. But I mean, I knew it was coming. Yeah, but- I mean, if his men were fighting, his men were fighting. He got the Bran pretty quickly. But we know that there's not many on guard yeah. either. Yeah. So yeah, it starts off. I don't know if there's too much to talk about. Uh, Summer's chilling by himself. It's rain. It's a rainy night. Not currently mm-hmm. rainy, but everything's wet. Um, he can smell shaggy dogs. Smells a bunch of different stuff. Uh, Thinks about ghosts. I don't know if it was now or later. Yep. Well, I think when Shaggy comes up, or when Shaggy dog it's comes close up, close enough. Him, yeah, yeah, he's like he, Shaggy's being like quiet. He thinks like almost as quiet as another brother he had once remembered. Yep. The one thing that I thought was weird is he says uh, he howled a long, deep, shivery cry, how to wake the sleepers. But the buildings, piles of man rock, were dark and dead. That was, I think that just means like the lights, no candles were lit, and like everyone's still sleeping. One hundred percent. But what? Well, I think like yeah. But what I think the, what the interesting part of that, what I was going for, was the how to wake the sleepers. Part of the night's watch. Um, just anybody. Yeah, but part of the night's watch, like mantra, like the thing that they say, their oath is the horn to wake the sleepers. We are the watchers on the wall. We are the fire that burns against the cold. We are the horn that wakes the sleepers. And here, uh, he howled a long, deep, shivery cry, a howl to wake the sleepers. So not a horn to wake the sleepers, but yeah, no, kind of like a nice, a nice watchman thing. Like, yo, everyone wake up. People are coming over the walls. Yeah, like, I mean, if you're watching no one, at night and someone comes in. I feel like this is probably just a, a castle nighttime thing. Like, they have a horn. Like, I'm just the thinking, like, this is part of the Night's Watch Oath. They ha- he, he howls to wake people up. Nobody wakes up. I wonder, like, in book six or, like, something goes on in the future, maybe in a future book for Kyle that we know about that you don't, does somebody blow the horn at the wall, everyone just sleeps through it or whatever, and then bad shit, people come over the wall. Right? I could see – I think this is a Night's Watch parallel for sure. He's trying yeah. to wake people up to stop people from coming over a wall. That's the whole Night's Watch job, right? Yeah. Uh, That's yeah. kind of what I got out of it. Yeah. Nothing crazy. I think, I just it's, think it's a Night's Watch parallel. The, the wording is close. Yep. Agreed. All right. So – uh, it, they catch a whiff too, though. Not just the clinks. Like they knew the clink was like, "What the fuck's this?" But then they catch a, a whiff stink. of man, and uh, they didn't know it. So they they know the smells of Winterfell pretty good. Strangers, have been stranger been, danger, stranger <laughs> danger, death. That's really what he thinks. Yeah, yeah. stranger uh, danger, death. <laughs> they run to the wall. They get to the wall. They're like, "Fuck! We remember there's a wall here. We've we've been through this a hundred times before. Uh, we can't get through it." They go to a gate, trying to bite it open. What are they stupid? He he's talking about the what a, a stone snake that's wrapped around, or does he talk a about chain. Iron snake. a chain? Black iron yeah. snake is just a chain, right? But it, it said like Shaggy Dog was trying to bite it open too. Like, yeah, well, of course. And then, and then they were gonna and they were gonna dig under it, but they tried that before too, and there was like. Basically, it was concrete underneath at some point or stones down there. You can't just dig under it. Uh, and then that's when the first – he gets the first voice, right? Locked, chained. Uh, yeah, locked. Something whispered, chained. The voice the voice he did not hear, the scent without a smell. Yeah, so Summer's like confused because he doesn't know like where it's coming from. He's thinking about trying to find some other way, but basically he thinks everywhere there's an opening in the rocks, there's a big-ass wooden door that we can't get through. Then voice whispers again, there is – and then he can almost like see a picture in front of him of this big ass tree slanting up on the up on the wall. And is that the is that the light bulb moment? Yeah, for the sentinel, I guess. Yeah. Well, I think it's the the brand moment, right? Yeah, like yeah. The brands like really pushing and and guiding. Yeah. Heavily. Can just imagine Summer's eyes open up like <gasps> the sentinel. And he's like, wait, fuck, it's not right here. It's over there. <laughs> yeah, because he sees like he says it's like pretty vivid. He sees it in front of him. So yeah, he takes off. Shaggy's chasing him. They go past the heart tree. Again, this is like seems to be mirroring a lot the chapter basically where Bran got pushed. The beginning of that chapter, mm-hmm. I think you mentioned earlier, is when he climbs the sentinel the first time. But when Bran runs through the godswood, he runs around the heart tree because he's like afraid of it. Bran afraid of the like, ass. feels uncomfortable when he's near the heart tree. Yeah. Which like we've even from that point, like we know that Bran's kind of like all about the heart tree now, really. He's been taken to the godswood and put put by the heart tree before by like Hoder and shit. So Shaggy Dog runs right by it, 
gets to the Sentinel. And then that's when uh, Summer's like, wait, I know what to do here. It sucks because this tree is kind of a pain in the ass to climb because it gets you all dirty and pokes you and stuff. But Pine pine tree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's also a great way. You know, it, it, it leads right up over the wall pretty much. But again, he, he like kind of catches himself thinking like a boy. He's like, I'm not a boy. It's not going to be as easy as I remember. But I think he ends up. What, he might rip a branch off it, <laughs> like snarls yeah. at it, bites a branch, uh, rips it off. I think it yeah. gets poked and he bites it off, right? Like, so then he starts to, then he just goes for it, takes like a big, backs the fuck up, starts running, imagines he's chasing a deer. First or he like, peed on it. Peed on it. Got to mark, got to mark your territory. He got backs it. up, starts running, then he like thinks he's chasing a deer or pretends he's chasing he's, a deer for he's a little bit. He's mentally chasing a deer, right? So he's trying to hype himself up. Yeah, so then he climbs up. Sprints up the tree, basically all momentum seems like doing most of the work here and gets close to the top, but doesn't make the whole way and misses a step. Yep. Foot slips off and he's falling, 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 which Bran has told Jojen that like, that's like his worst dream, right? He always dreams of falling. Yeah. And now Bran wakes up. So even in his now, even (laughs) this one, even in his wolf dream, he's it's a combination falling. wolf and, and falling dream. And it will stop trying to force people to climb that can't bring <laughs> yeah. his shoulder kind of hurts. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's on the IR. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, he, he's kind of seeing the connection here. He's like, wait, that kind of still hurts even though I wasn't. Yeah. And that's where he's like, Jojen was right. I am a beastling and a war. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, Kyle, I feel like we've, you've p- predicted or you've said that you thought this was, there was some connection there before, but I feel like this is like the first one ever. Like the first like real one, right? All the other ones like oh, Bran sure. has had point of views from Summer, but yeah. even if there is any influence, he definitely wasn't aware that he had any control. Um, yeah, might have had some of his desires or whatever because he was connected, but he wasn't, you know, giving yeah. commands for sure. Exactly. So yeah, it's it's growing. His power is growing, I guess, essentially, right? Or he's learning how to use it. We're getting more into more magic-y, not historical fiction. It's so weird watch looking at you drink that stuff it does look like blue milk i did think that when i yeah poured. kyle's drinking a weird beer that looks like uh blue milk from star wars is it super con cannony or does it taste like beer I, I, I think it honestly it tastes the lychee taste the most which isn't a great thing because i'm not a huge lychee fan lychee yeah it's a fruit, fruit. It's an, i think mm. it's an asian fruit hmm. i don't know i've never heard of that either never heard of it um I think it's a small PB-ish size, but I, I don't honestly know much about it. Gotcha. But all right, all Thanks right. So Brand, so Brand knows something's wrong, and he's trying to get pulled out of bed. But because Roderick had to take a bunch of people, nobody's there. Nobody's there. Nobody's on guard, and there's like eight people to watch the wall right. of the whole Place castle. Is empty. Yeah. So he gets a little bit into that, right? Eight days ago, Sir Roderick took six hundred Winterfell and nearby Holdfast men, and Clay Sterling was bringing three hundred more to join them on the march. 600, Roderick? Come on. Do you need 600 or you couldn't have taken 550? Roderick, Roderick went to the the bastard, right? He went to where, remember, Theon the, uh, was like, the um, was telling Dagmar, not his uncle. He's like, Dagmar, you got to besiege oh, yeah, his castle. A, I don't really care if you take it or yeah. yeah, he got. So that's where, that's assuming, yeah, because they the get bait. into it, right? They talk about Dagmar, old man Roderick tells took the bait. Bran that he Got an axe, split his face, but he was too stubborn to die, so he just held his face together till it healed. Which <laughs> like, isn't pretty, too far it's off. Pretty right? cool tell. Like, pretty cool tell tale. <laughs> yeah. Tall tale. Yeah, he held the halves of his head together until it healed. Yeah, yeah, classic little old man exaggeration, but not not too far off. Yeah. So, but nobody came. Hodor, Osha, Mira, Jojen, nobody. So he starts doing uh, monkey bars over to the over to the window, and bam, Theon's in. Yeah, well, it's it's not Theon because he's like, "Who the fuck are you? Get out of my room!" Yeah, and then it's Theon. some dude with an axe and a dirk, and then Theon kind of steps in behind him. And he's like, "Yeah, actually, this is my room." It's pretty, pretty <laughs> much what he says. Yeah, they're like, "We're not here to hurt you." Uh, and Bran is just like confused as fuck. He's like, "Oh, Rob, Rob sent you." And yeah, because like, ah, when they when they, 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 they saw right? Theon, they were cool. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's like, "Ah, not quite." Cool enough. Like he never really liked Theon, but yeah, he's like, uh, not not quite, buddy. Uh, Rob's Rob can't. It's too far away, and he's not going to help you now. He's like, what do you mean help me? He's like, don't don't try and scare me, Theon. And Theon's like, all right, Brad, wake up. I'm taking this shit from you. All right, buddy, I'm in charge now. Yeah, this shit's this shit's mine. I'm a prince. Look so. at me. I'm the captain now. I'm the captain. Nope. <laughs> 
Yeah, he, so Theon does the classic. Don't call me. It's Prince Theon now, Bran. You better get my titles right. Uh, he's like, we're both princes now. Who would have thought that? And he basically, Theon tells Warlog, who is the other guy with them, to, hey, get out. Let me talk to Bran by, by myself for a minute here. Yep. Basically tells him how he took the castle. Yeah, I think that was for us. Is this bragging? I yeah. think he's bragging. Yeah. Like, you stupid fuck. Yeah, bragging, but I think it was also for us. I think it was both. Theon is a braggart. I, you're right. Yeah, no, we. I, I'm with you. It was our way of finding out what happened. Quickly. <laughs> so what they did, right? So Theon tells him, he says, send four men over the walls with grappling claws and ropes, and they opened a postern gate, postern gate for the rest of us. My men are dealing with yours even now. I promise you, Winterfell is mine. And I think later, we don't get a total number of Theon's men now, but like later, Bran estimates. Seems like 30, 30 ish, did he say? I think like, or? he's like, there's 10 in here. Yeah, he's like, there's fucking nobody. Like, they, we got, can, they got some guys on the wall, some guys like, on the wall. We got a chance. Like, this isn't over. So, yet. did Roderick leave nobody? I think he left like a small, I don't know. I'm saying he probably left like who he thought could be 50, but I, a lot of them were like, like nobody. But I, I think a lot of them were like, all right, like this is like old Nan's fucking cousin who was a, I don't know, a bar manager. He was pouring pints and they're like, all right, you're on watch now. Like it's not, not seasoned what, war people. There's not many people left. What did he think they had here, right? Like, I mean. Yeah, I mean, there, there shouldn't be any, but it just seems like a bad. I mean, Lewin comes in and starts saying that like it's my fault just as much as his. But I mean, if Theon's able to take a big ass castle with this many people. Yeah, but they all felt safe. They all felt like, what's going to happen? Complacency, so it gets you, Kyle. I obviously, like, <laughs> the war's way down there. They don't know these Greyjoys are even anywhere coming up here. You know, like they, yeah, this is new to them. Like, mm. and they, and they still threat. think Theon's an ally too. They don't yeah. think nobody he's not even, an ally. Yeah, exactly. Nobody knew that he kind of switched sides. They just hadn't heard from him since he left Rob. Yeah, maybe not all of the Ironborn, but Theon at least they probably think is with Rob. Yeah, so like I said, I, I it's hard to blame him, hindsight kind of thing. And that's what they're, he's having as well. Yeah, so Bran, after he hears the story, he's like, I don't understand. Why would you do this? You're my father's ward. He's like, well, not anymore. Now you're my ward. And, you, and Rickon. And he's like, basically tells him right now, there's some fighting going on. But when that's done, me, you, and everybody who's still alive is going to go meet up in the Great Hall. And you're going to basically formally yield the castle to me mm. uh, in front of everybody. And make sure everybody stays in line, too. And Bran's like, no, go fuck yourself. No, not a shot. I'm going to do that. He's like, we're going to kick you out. And Theon's like, you don't understand what's going on here, Bran. Like, you guys don't have the chance. Uh, don't play the boy. I'm not going to deal with it. Lewin, I'm going to send Lewin in here to, do, to straighten you out, right? Yep. All right. So he's waiting now, and Maester Lewin pops in to get him ready. Lewin's cut up. Must have talked back one too many times, you think? I mean, or they just, you know, just gave him a punch. Comply immediately with the beating, you know, smash his head off the wall real quick, and then be like, come on, you know, <laughs> listen to us, or else you're getting more of that. I mean, he also goes in to say, right, it's kind of important. He says he got off two ravens before they came in. So, like, well, yeah, my yeah, picture yeah. is like when they come in, he's like, he's right. throwing birds in the air <laughs> and shit. And yeah, that. like, right, you know, trying to hand him off to a raven and he steps, so they're like just trying to stop that. Maybe go smash his head on the desk or whatever. But he does say that he got two birds off, one went down. But one of them got one of them got away and is going to White Harbor. So there's somebody knows about this. If Lewin lives with the Ravens, that's pretty good. If he had to like run they to, live, a, I think they live above him, right? Right above him, like he just maybe climbed a ladder. Probably, up yeah. probably in his tower. He has a yeah. tower. I'm saying, like, if he had to go, like, because no, maybe he was awake. Maybe he wasn't awake. Like, <laughs> he's running across the sneaks yard. Sneaks across the Assassin Creed. Sneaks across the yard. Did jumps something. In a hay bale, hides from he's like butt yeah. naked. <laughs> <laughs> just got out of bed. But yeah, no, yeah. I think just I, wonder I what, what awoke Lewin to then go right. And then how did he know that they were being overtaken? You know, there's some howling wolves for sure. And Bran screaming. I'm just saying, if he doesn't get this letter away, how long till people, somebody would have to show up to Winterfell and then yeah. be able to leave Winterfell unharmed to be able to, to tell about what I, I feel like this news would get around though. Theon and the Greyjoys would probably spread it to some degree. Yeah, Theon doesn't say – Theon would send a letter to everyone just like – Show a power like, at the very least. I'm like, the prince of Winterfell. <laughs> yeah, don't fuck us up. Yeah, don't fuck with us. We did this. We have – we already have some land. Yeah, yeah. just mm-hmm. to try to flex. So him and Lewin have a little convo just about like 
Lewin basically says we shouldn't take as much people, just like I said earlier. Yeah. But the thing here is when when Lewin says that, he's like, it's my fault. He's like, I shouldn't, I didn't expect this. And Brand's like, Jojen did. Like, yeah, he thinks it. He didn't tell him. I forget what yeah, did he thinks it to himself. What did he tell Lewin about Jojen's? The quote did he I tell read. him that the the sea was coming over the wall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the quote I read. And then what Rick, had, I mean, Roderick even said, like, back to him, like, oh, then if I have to go out to fight the Ironborn, I won't bring Alebelly, right? And Alebelly got left behind here. And I think uh, yeah, and he got killed. Yeah, I think we're about to get into it. Lewin tells him that Alebelly was on the gate and was surprised and killed. Yeah, yeah so. See ya. But basically, he's like, hey, uh, Theon wants me to yield the castle. And he's like, all right, there's no shame in that, like. You gotta, you gotta keep these people safe right now. Yep, that's pretty much what he's saying. That's your smartest play. Like we don't, we can't fight back at this point. We've been taken. Let's bide our time, pretend we're we're okay with this, and see what happens. Roderick will be back. You know, he does have a lot of people. Yeah, they get them all dressed up, and then they go dress Rick on. Yep, they find Rick on halfway down the stairs. He's not happy. He want, <laughs> He's asking for mom and Shaggy Dog. Who would you rather have, Shaggy Dog or Cat? I'm going Shaggy Dog. <laughs> if you ask Rick on, I don't know what he'd say. <sighs> I don't even remember what his mom looks like. But they get Rick on out. They go down. They see Joe and Amir down below them. Like a floor, I guess a floor below them. They're getting let out by a short guy with a spear. Um, the fucking Walters are like, ha <laughs> You yeah, guys, they're they're like, yeah. Hey, you guys are hostages now too. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Now you guys are hostages, and then Judge is like, well, "Yeah, what do you think we you are? are you are stupid you're shit. A hostage, you idiot." Yeah. Well, not always. He's. I mean, it's just like kind of. No, I think I think Jojen's just saying like, dude, we're all fucked right now. Like, I mean, a few <laughs> a few cat chapters ago, when she was when she was like scolding Edmure for taking men out of the phrase, he was like, "You still have the wards, and like, here's other reasons why they have to trust." So I get that they're not like. That's not what they're publicly as, but that was like part of the, that was part hostages. of the point. Yeah, yeah, they're not hostage. They're not in a cell, but like that was part of the point was to have them under control. All right, so they get down to the Great Wall. I thought something was going to happen here. This dude's torch goes out. Yeah, walking across. The wolves are howling at the same time. Yeah, I, the whole time I was kind of waiting for either Bran to go back to sleep or the dog to just like sh- shaggy or not shaggy summer i guess may or maybe shaggy dog because uh summer fell she might be hurt um or he might be hurt i don't i don't i don't know summer i just for some reason feel feminine name but anyway i think it's a he yeah i think i think right. i think they match the genders of the children i think i know i think you're 100 percent correct I, I just summer anyway so i was kind of expecting yeah one of them to just you know show up change things a little bit but not yet not yet Get into the great hole, yeah. Not yet. I I feel like it's coming. Um, that last, the beginning of this chapter kind of really hyped that up, <laughs> so it better happen. Um, but so yeah, they get in the great hall, and it's. I feel like we've come across scenes like this before, you know. So you you enter, and somebody's in, you know, the the wrong chair, or well, I mean, it's like that that whole right change of power. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean, you know. Well, like, yeah. I mean, Jamie is. Everybody's like, I can't believe he's fucking sitting in that. Yeah. J- Jamie's there when Ned walks in, <laughs> yeah. and. Well, it's funny because Rickon, Rickon's like, "Why is Theon in Rob's chair?" <laughs> because Rickon's so young, he's not quite understanding what's going on. And Bran's just like, "Shut the fuck up! This is not good." He can feel there's tension in the room. Um, only a few torches were lit, so it was mostly like dark and dreary mm-hmm. in there. We know it's like a damp night outside, just gloomy day all around, like right out of a scary movie, kind of. Old Nan's in there though, with her, with no teeth. Hey, we got a lot of people. Old Nan Hayhead was being carried by two other guards. We had heard that Hayhead was injured when we heard that Alebelly died. Poxy Tim was crying inconsolably, and Beth Cassell was also crying. Who's Beth Cassell? Is that Roderick? Roderick's daughter. Daughter. Okay. Yeah. So there was a third person that was mentioned in Jojen's thing. The Septon. Septon Shale. He so he hasn't heard about him yet. He comes. No, in. he gets brought up. And why do they have a Septon? Because of cat. Okay, yeah. Septon for cat. Yep. Um. Ned made yeah, he gets brought for, up for cat, so he probably is recent addition to Winterfell. I remember. Yeah, I didn't know if you if he needed a Septon and a Scepter. Yeah, and when I say recent, I mean like since for, cat got there. Yeah. Yeah. Theon's basically like, who are these two people? I, I was here like a year and a half ago, and these four people were not here. He gets the introduction. Uh, Lewin introduces basically who the phrase and the reeds are. Theon's like, bad timing for the reeds, but good timing <laughs> for me. More hostages. 
Theon tells Black Lauren to bring Bran up, put him in the in the seat, and they're bringing in more people. So this is where Gage the cook and Osha get brought in. They're covered in flour from Bran says making the morning bread. They dragged in Micken. He wasn't Micken's not happy, and they drink it. Uh, nah, Micken's fighting still. So. They drink it. Drag in Farlin, who is the kennel master, and Paula. Paula's dress was ripped, and she she got she got taken a couple times. I'm, yeah, she she's not looking too happy. Her dress was ripped. She who is Paula? Walking. She's Farlin's daughter. This is the first time she was mentioned. Yes. Okay. So then we hear about Septon Chael. Bam. And he's going to help uh, Paula, Paula, and but one of the Iron Men was like, "No, fuck that!" Knocked him to the floor. So he. What was his prediction? Here that these Iron dudes are are not not taking no shit, right? And I'm, obviously that gets amplified here quickly. But this is kind of the first, not the first, but this is introducing that to us. You know that the. What was the prediction of Septon Chala that he would drown? He too, would die or? too. Yeah. The prediction was that they were all going to drown, but is that, that like? Brand I mean, it's, later, it's him it's, getting is him getting knocked down by an Iron Man, him drowning. Why well, don't yeah. even? He might come back up later that they actually stab him or something. I, I don't remember. They definitely kill Micken here later. Well, yeah, I mean, they, they we hear Alebelly died. We don't hear how, but when Micken dies, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Brand does think like he drowned on his own blood because he gets like stabbed through the fl- throat with a. Uh, so he like, Brand's thinking like actual drowning. We have no idea if Alebelly drowned, and I don't know if we do hear anything about uh, Sepp and Shell about him drowning, but it might be more of like a if. The Ironborn are represented by waves. Do they actually have to drown or just be killed by the Ironborn? Right. So I don't know. But he's in, they knock him down. And then Bran says the last person they're bringing in is Reek. And they say they can smell him before they see him, which is kind of reminds me of Varys showing up. I don't know why. And I don't know if there's any connection, but it's like Varys showing up. When Tyrion. That's shower. usually how he gets introduced. Yeah. Because Tyrion's right. like, I smelled him. And he, tur- and he turns and he saw Shay. And then he sees Varys next to her and Varys. Sh- he doesn't even know who Varys yeah. is, right? But, well, that's like one of his definitely part of his disguises is, is yeah. the, the stink, the, the scent. Yeah. So basically, they, t- they the guy who brings him in tells him that it's Reek. Wow, you really do. Sp- I wonder why they call him Reek. <laughs> yeah, no wonder. How about his real name, Heek? Hecky, Heek. It's yeah. probably Heek. Heek. He asked him if he uh, fucked a pit, fucked a big. He's like, not since I've <laughs> not since I've been. I haven't fucked anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then he basically tells a story. I was servant to Ramsey. It didn't roll yeah. out that he was fucking pissed. Yeah, I think he was like kind of joking, and it's kind of I think it's like the was joking. humor. I was joking I too, Nelson. I'm just saying I think he's like I think he's probably striking a chord here. It's the type of humor. He said that to the right guy. He then tells him that uh, Ramsey he was Ramsey's uh, servant until the Ar- Starks gave him an arrow for a wedding gift. Theon thinks that's funny too. Who the fuck did he marry? He tells him the lady. Or Hornwood. Why, why the fuck did he marry Lady Hornwood? Yeah, well, he says Lady Lady Hornwood. Then he asks why. And he's like, her, she has teats like empty wineskins, dry and withered. And he, Reek says it wasn't the, uh, it wasn't the wineskins. He wasn't marrying her for it wasn't her teats. teats. he married her for. Yeah. Which he doesn't really explain. I wonder if Theon, like, even is understanding what that means. But I hope he fucking understands or he's fucking duller than a yeah. burnt light bulb. It's also funny that, like, it just reminds you that, like, Theon knows these people that he's, like, like, most yeah, of these, yeah, for like, sure. he knew Lady That Orn, even but, happened in the last chapter, yeah, yeah. the one where he's, yeah, had to send that guy to die. Exactly. Very personal stuff going on here, yeah. Did Mickin get brought in yet? Yeah, right now. Damn. Iron Man slam shut the doors. Um, you all know me, says Theon. Yeah, we know you for a sack of shit. Yep. Sack of steam dunk. <laughs> says Mickin. <laughs> Bran yells at him a little bit, tries to sound like Rob, but he's eight. I can just imagine his. Doesn't work uh, so well. He literally says he gets a voice crack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at eight, your voice doesn't even crack. It's probably just a shriek. Yeah. Stop it! Theon tells him to listen. He's like, little Bran's got more sense than you do, dumb old Micken. Bran tells him, all right, boys, I got to do what I got to do. Tells all his men, I yielded. Prince Theon's or Theon's in charge now. Theon's like, you better call me Prince. Bran, he's like, I yielded to Prince Theon. And you, you're you supposed to do as he says. And Micken speaks up again. I'll be damned if I listen to him. Theon ignores it. Kind of explains what's going on down in the Iron Islands. Uh, his dad says he's now the king of the Iron Islands as well as the north. By conquest, and you're all subjects. Yeah. Bugger that. So fuck Rob is pretty much what he says. <laughs> Micken just keeps fighting. I serve yeah. Starks, not you, you motherfucker. Not some treasonous squid of, uh, but the butt of the spear smash, smashes him and gets cut <laughs> off. He says, it's, Theon says that smiths have strong arms, but weak heads. 
and he's like, if you serve me as good as no as Ned, I'll be just as generous as a lord as you guys could want. Bran's just like, Mikon, please just stay down and don't say anything. Mikon, Mikon, Mikon doesn't. Just- <laughs> yeah, he's like, look at look at this sorry group of dudes you have. You think oh. you're gonna hold the entire north? Oh. Like, we have friends. Yeah. Pretty much. And then oh. Spear goes to the back of his neck. Stig gets him. Stig gets on the frag count here. Stig, welcome. A woman screams. Mira uh, basically grabs Rick on right this away. This way he gets a, it's bloody drowned on. Yep. Yeah. Brant thought normally his own blood. Theon's like, anybody else have anything to say? And Hodor starts Hodoring. Hodor. Or Hodor. Because Theon basically tells people to shut him up, and nobody understand probably understands like like what's up with the with Hodor. So they just beat the shit. Theon out of him does though. So Theon, Theon does exactly. He lets this shit happen. Yeah. They beat the shit out of Hodor. That's fucked yeah. Up. And then I think while this is going on, he's like right after that, right? He basically starts telling addresses everyone else again. He's like, "I'll be as good to you as Ned ever was." As Hodor is getting beat in the background, he's telling all these people, That's just "I'll be message. as good as Ned is." <laughs> Yeah, don't betray well, me just don't and talk. You wish you hadn't. Don't talk while I'm trying to monologue on the throne. And don't think everybody here is everybody I have. Yeah. I have more reinforcements on the way. They're just dealing with some other places of importance. He does like do the bad guy thing where he just tells his plan, right? Monologues, yeah. That's what Jeff was saying. And I didn't realize what Jeff was saying when he was saying it, but yeah, he does the whole here's my entire plan <laughs> yeah. and exactly how to foil it. Yeah. Going to Deepwood Mott, Mo Kalen. Uh he does again, we don't really get inside Theon's head, but like not that yeah, I was thinking like the reeds would be good for Mo Kalen. I don't know who like holds Mo like does a family hold Mo Kalen? Like the reeds hold Deepwater uh what's that what's their Deepwater Mott? Deep or no, Grey Watch? Grey Watch. Gray, yeah. Well Gray, they say it. Yeah, they say it in this chapter. Greywater Watch. Greywatch. Greywater Watch, yeah. They hold that, which is close to Mokalen, but like, who holds Mokalen? I actually don't know. I don't Wasn't it empty? Isn't that the one that they banned like Cap, at first? Cap meets Rob at, at yeah. that castle in the at the end of the first book. And it's like, like sinking and not, yeah. not in great shape. Yeah, so I don't think anybody does. But it's a, it's like an incredibly a hard point, castle yeah. to take, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, sure Rob left people there, important. I would guess, yeah. So then he, he goes on to say that that if they hold off the Lannisters, he can have the trident, like which is. Like, Rob can keep the trident. We'll both be king. I don't even care. We'll be, it'll be good. But that's not like he's saying that without his deal. dad, right? And like his dad wouldn't approve of that. Do you think? Uh, we don't know what his dad's intentions are right now. It seems like he's just focused on the north. But yeah, I mean, probably. Well, not. it's not even his dad's intention to take Winterfell, so. Yeah, I mean, I, again, like, it's one of those things we're not in Theon's head, but I bet you Theon, like, we know he's still sympath- sympathetic to, he's sympathetic to both sides, Rob and his yeah. father. He's so, like, he's probably to... in his head, he's, he might think, like, oh, this can, everyone can be happy. We can, we can all Even win. if he doesn't, <laughs> he's got a room full of Rob's people. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> right here that he's trying to convince. Yeah, he's yeah. just feeding them shit then. But I could see it going both ways. Reek's like, you know, this isn't going to be easy. There's, there's more than just the Starks that are going to be mad at you about this. Yeah. Um. Fat White Harbor, the, the bloated pig from White yeah. Harbor, the Umbers, <laughs> Umbers and the Car Starks. Starks. You're gonna need people. I'll fight with you. He's like, oh wow, you're kind of smart, Reek. Can I trust you? Which wasn't that part of Jojen's other thing was that Reek would kill Ra- or Bran and I, his brother. I do have this one as well. Um, Bran could tell that Jojen was hiding something, and he asked Jojen if he saw him in a green dream if he was drowned. Not drowned. Jojen spoke as if every word pained him. I dreamed of him, the man who came today, the one they call Reek. You and your brother lay dead at his feet, and he was skinning off your faces with a long red blade. Holy fuck. So, yeah, now he is no longer in chains. I think this might be the first one that, that they figure out how to change. Although, I could see Rickon getting killed because he's not really super important currently. But I, I don't I don't think we lose Bran here. I guess that's all I got to say. So, maybe that this is like kind of... because. Jojen and Mira had this whole Mira, his sister, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they had that whole argument about whether or not, like, it was anything could be done yeah. to solve these dreams. Exactly. Mira's like, "What's the point of sending them if you can't do anything about them?" Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Osha. So they they say, "Yeah, sure, Reek, you're on our side." And then Osha, Osha's like, "Shit, I can get, I can get out of this too." Yeah. I don't want to be a Kokor. I want to be a <laughs> yeah. spear lady. Yep. They're like, all right, you you don't know how to do a spear. Then says, uh, <laughs> "I got a spear for you," and then she knees him in the nuts. <laughs> yeah, um, takes a spear, knocks him, him down, a spear, with it. knocks him out. Yeah, 
tells him, you can keep your soft pink thing. I'll, I'll keep the wooden iron. Everyone laughs. Theon loves it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So she also, he, at first, Theon's like, you, you're not a warrior. And she's like, you know I'm a warrior. You were there the day they captured me. I was like killing people and stuff. So he's like, okay, yeah. And then she embarrasses Stig. So he's like, yep, you're in. You're in. Which Bran is pissed because uh, like I thought I thought we were on the same team. I think she's got stuff up here though. I, I don't think she's she's fully on the onside. You don't think she's a turn nah. cloak? I don't. I mean, she did turn. She did jump from Wildling to Starks pretty quick. Not that they're like enemies, but yeah, I I don't know. I don't feel like that's happening. Though. Gotcha. Yep. Nobody else. Nobody else stepped up in service. Just Reek and Osha. Yep. Which makes sense because they're the the only real captains here, right? Yeah. Like the only people that don't yeah, have a reason to be loyal. Starks. And I think everybody else is really. I don't know if they really had like a lot of them were ladies. Like what yeah, that's the other side exactly. Yeah. Nobody else is a fighter anyway. Also, if like Micken or Gage or Farlin, like Kennelmaster Smith or uh, Cook was like, oh Theon, I'll, I'll, I'm cool with you. Like with with Theon, have bought that. All right. Well, well, even if they <laughs> do, like all right, keep cooking. Like it's not like they change. Yeah, exactly. Like, they're going to do the same their situation like, doesn't change like at you're all. On our side now, yeah. So, uh, basically, it just ends with. Hodor being Poor fucked Hodor, up, right? Yeah, cracked lips, yeah. and then and then walking Bran to bed. Yep. Bye, Bran. Night, night. Which is good news, right? Because that means if <laughs> he, he does go back to bed, <laughs> he either dreams of falling or <laughs> yeah. he's in his wolf. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which could be good and news. Maybe, so and maybe he tries to climb the window. I think I that's that's when we get my what my prediction was today to come true. I think I think the wolves get out. I mean, they obviously found a way out this chapter. I thought somebody would let them out. I thought Osha actually was gonna, but um, that obviously didn't happen. But so you think they they end up climbing the tree and then getting some some I frags? I mean, what else in? is gonna happen, right? Like they're gonna have to figure out a way out of there. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's getting open. I think the tree was was. Why? Why else explain this tree is here at this point? <laughs> why yeah. show I'm trying to figure it out? Yeah, check off tree. Check off yeah. tree. Uh, yeah. All right. Well. That's yeah, I mean, it. That's the chapter. Short one. Yeah. It is a short one. Super it's a medium short. length, I mean, that's... medium length page wise, but yeah. Page, I mean, but I mean, right? there was like seven pages of, or maybe not seven. I think it was like twelve pages. Like four of them are just summer, summer. running around the woods. Yeah. Which is again, I think it's a good chapter, cool chapter, yeah. just a short podcast. Yep. Sorry. All right. So sorry if you were trying I, to run. What's like the next one? A five k during this episode, and is the next one short. Aria? Next, one? next one's Aria. Yeah. If you're gonna run a five k, rest up because the next one it might be the longest one of the cha- of the book. All right, well, we'll see the rest of you guys in the spoiler section. We'll see Kyle next week in Aria 10 or 9, Whoa. maybe. It's a lot of Aria. I, 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 I count on you to keep track of the numbers. So. Aria 9. It's a doozy. It's a long one. Sounds good. See you, Kyle. Bye. Later, nerds. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! See you later, Kyle. It's great hanging out, bud. We'll see you on the next episode for Aria 9. Boy, what are your hot takes for Brand 6? Boy. Um, dude, I really don't have anything. Mickey goes out like a boss. Sir Roderick's a lot cooler when he dies. Hush, boy. I'm going to see your father. Yeah, we were talking about Swack. this last time. Uh, yeah, I think the show... The show seems cooler, but... I think it's good that Roderick doesn't die because I don't, I don't know. I just like the way that it plays out later what, on. When is the, Roderick still alive when we come Roderick back? Roderick comes back and surrounds a castle with a bunch of Northmen. Yeah, but then then there's siege gets broken by... Reed convinces Theon, oh, if you let me leave the castle, I still have some pull with the Dreadfort men. You go over there and the Dreadfort will join right. your side. I'll be, I might be able to convince them. And if not, what's the worst? You lost a captive that you didn't give a fuck about anyway. So he sends Reek away. Reek comes back as Ramsey. Right. They're being Winterfell's being besieged. Ramsey rolls up next to Roderick, and he's like, "I'm here to join with the rest of the Northmen to win yeah. the seat of our lords back." And then he like kills. They like backstab everyone out there. Right. Does he and kill Roderick, or is Roderick alive? Uh, I think uh, before any of that happens, Theon is threatening to hang hang Beth Cassell off the walls of right. Winterfell if Roger doesn't yield. Right. I I remember that actually, I think. 
I don't exactly remember how it plays out. Uh, Roderick dies. I'm pretty sure Roderick dies. Yeah. yeah. He does, he does not. He like just, that. whatever, whatever. Maybe guy, dies in the, uh, I'm pretty sure Ramsey just like rides right up in the staff. Ramsey betrayal. Uh, I think Ramsey pretty right big. When you reread the quote, pretty big hint that Reek is actually Ramsey. Yeah. Especially even Kyle was saying like, when I brought it up, he's like, Oh yeah, it's very, he's always seems to be like using that as part of his disguise. Well, like his smell. Not even like, him smelling the quote that you read about the vision. Like he's peeling off their face with yeah. a knife. Like he's obviously flaying them. I don't know if, but flaying, he should like, know. We I think we maybe even said this because Kyle picked uh, as his logo the flayed man. Yeah, right? but like so, <laughs> there's a couple of things there, right? Like he's flaying, which gives a hint that a he's a he's a Bolton the whole time. Uh, and then like the fact that the fact that it's his faces, it's two faceless boys. Yeah, right? he's peeling the faces off Brandon and Brandon Rickon because it's a whole. We're pretending it's random right. kids are Brandon and Rickon. We're going to make it so they're unrecognizable. So they're basically peeling the faces off these other two farm boys. And maybe Jojen, maybe even in the dream that Jojen had, it was he dreamed of the two farm boys and he assumed it was Brandon and Rickon because they were about the same age, right? Like he might not mm-hmm. even have seen the face. He might have just seen two faces boys and assumed dressed in Brandon uh, Rickon's clothing. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, so, I mean, I guess that's the biggest spoil. When does that happen? Sometimes I want to push Kyle on certain things, but I feel like, like, hey, what do you think this dream is going to mean? But I don't, again, I don't want to be pushy, but then like forcing her to think about it makes it, makes like, makes it more obvious. Yeah. yeah. I think it's okay. Cause we're keeping an eye on it and, and at least talking about it here. I don't, again, like it's, I think it's better when he's like, oh shit. Like that's what that meant. Yeah. Versus yeah, like, sure. oh, now I'm waiting for this to I be Ramsey. Like- like you were saying, though, I feel like we're better at like kind of bringing some of that up. Like we did, I brought one up with the varies thing, right? The whole point mm. there is like the false smells covering the real ones. You use fake smells to cover the real thing. Varies is dressed as a bad yep. stinky person to cover the true varies. Yep. Kyle even kind of put that together with the smell, like the smell and the hot disguise, but he didn't. He didn't take the last step to he, yeah, just reek that this in disguise. That reek is Which, again, actually. That's a big step. Yeah, right? that's t- into a total big like if he were to say that he'd probably think it was an outlandish claim. I think as we get further in the books and you realize that like people being not who they are, like say they are. Is a, Again, there's no ID. There's thing. no ID. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's not many pictures of I'm sh- sure most of the people. Right. So, yeah. So I thought there was. Uh, yeah, I don't have any two big spoilers, but there's some stuff, there's some stuff I want to talk about. One, is I think there's a weird connection to to ghost in this chapter. Like when Shaggy Dog walks up, Summer thinks he's quiet, like he's ghost. quiet, like ghost, and thinks about his other uh, thing. He thinks about the white brother with red eyes, right? Yep. There's a time when um, Bran is the, I don't know when it is, but Bran was thinking that he wanted to name Summer Ghost, but he's like, it didn't make sense because he wasn't white anyway. Yeah. Right. Because there was a time. That was an earlier chapter. It was in this chapter. I don't remember that. When would, when was he even thinking about Ghost or Summer? Because right away, right away he wakes up and he's like, you know, what the fuck's going on? And well, then, right when he wakes up is one of the things I is the next one I ha- is the last one I had, which is the least connecty one. His shoulders seemed to ache as if he had fallen on it, but he knew it was only the ghost of what the wolf was feeling. Yeah. Okay. It's only the ghost of what the which again isn't like, but I I thought he said something about, dude. I'm pretty sure it's not. You're right. It's not. Doesn't look like it's here, but I I'm pretty sure. I'm going to say it's an, it sounds like an earlier brand. I can't find it. If I find it, I'll try, I'll do some looking and try and find it and post it in the discord. If, uh, when the podcast comes out, um, but I'm pretty sure brand wanted to, to name at some point it says brand wanted to name his name summer ghost, but like the name, the name was taken and his fur was the wrong color. I'm pretty, but like, it, like it fit his other ghost better. Cause shaggy or summer was Brown instead of, or gray instead of white. Um, Again, I think it's in this chapter. Maybe I'm totally wrong. It's not in this chapter. Uh, but at least Shaggy is compared to Ghost. Summer thinks of him then, thinks of his, his brother that he didn't. It might even... Oh, hold on. Let me check one more time. You might be right here. I'm just on a like a forum. Because uh, John had already taken the name Ghost for his wolf. Though if I remember correctly, I think while John was war dreaming, Ghost seemed to think of Summer actually smelling of Summer. But, I mean, that, kind of to your point, like Ghost was already taken, but... Does that say where that quote is? No. Yeah, I don't know. It's that, uh, it's somewhere. I'll find it. I'll find out where that is. Jeff Jeff found it too. So now I know I'm not crazy. I just got to locate what part of the book it's in. So 
But just the fact that he was going to name Summer that, he says he has the ghost, the ghost of what the wolf was feeling. Yeah. Um, and then the only reason I bring that up is because I think there was something to the how that wakes the sleepers. Like, like you I, know I how- get what you're saying. I'm not I, – I think it's a parallel. I don't know if it's more than that. But what I'm saying is I think it might be a parallel to something we haven't seen yet. Like a lot of times like we'll see something like this and then like maybe in book six, like the White well, Walkers. Don't the, like, like don't I said, the maybe the White Walkers co- do come and somebody blows the horn and for whatever reason, everyone's super sleepy. Or like maybe it's really windy up at the top of the wall and whoever's blowing the horn, the it doesn't make it – the sound yeah. doesn't well, make doesn't, it Well, don't they come to the fist of first men and catch them pretty off guard soon? They blow the horn, people cut off guard, but people wake up. I think everybody wakes up. I mean, Lewin must have woken up here. You're right, Again, you're like right. the Lewin's – like maybe not – you know, there's just not many people here to. I, I I'm not opposed to you. I don't. What more is going to happen on the wall? It's going to fucking fall. I don't know. Just get, uh, for some reason, like he's literally howling to wake people when people are coming over. Over like he's literally howling to wake people when people are coming over the wall, and like it just gives me big Night's Watch vibes. Uh, I don't know for whatever reason. No, I mean it is. Yeah, no reason later. Super, we in the non spoiler, but uh, I I don't think it was all Bran and Summer's head here. Yeah. I think, yeah, again, like we were saying, I think I kind of said my honest opinions to Kyle. I think it's a little bit half and half, if anything, more like 90% 10 summer brand for the normal. No, I think, I think, I think Blood Ravens in here too. You think Blood Ravens? I mean, like the Sentinel and stuff, that just seems like. That's super brandy. It just seems like, it almost seems like summer consciousness with brand subconscious. Like brand, it's a brand memory. Like summer doesn't remember climbing that tree, but brand does. Uh, And I don't know if I have anything to back it up, but. To the point of like him thinking of ghosts, right? Like the white white brother with red eyes, and like that's not Brand's memory. Like that ghost was quiet, or that yeah, it's Brand, his brother. Yeah, the fact that they call him Ghost Brother means that's a summer. Like summer is referencing his own brother. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't know. I just think obviously there was a weirwood there, so we know we know Blood Raven is. But again, to Blood Raven's point, like he wants Brand to leave. Yeah. So. It's not like he's stopping anything from happening. The other thing I think is interesting is I mentioned it in the non spoiler too. Bran, and when he does this, like basically we get a ch- chapter. There's way more of Summer here than there is of Bran running through the Godswood in Book One before he mm-hmm. gets pushed out the tower. But we, it's a it's a parallel, right? Summer yeah, runs no, through the Godswood, so the Sentinel just like almost. Bran does. Yeah, yeah. Bran though runs around the the Weirwood tree. Summer runs right by it, under it, yeah. right under it, right. Yep. So this is it just I think that shows Bran was not on board with this old God, old magic stuff. And like, this is now, now he's, he's accepted going it. right past it. Yeah. He's like, it's part, it's part of him. Yeah. So again, not a huge thing. One more small thing that I think is kind of another point. Kyle would have to really be thinking here, but I was, I caught it. How does Reek <laughs> know who Balon is when he's like, swear to me, he swears. I swear to you, Prince Theon and King Balon. But I, I don't think Theon had said his father's name at all up to that point. He said his father had taken the crown. My father had taken the crown, or whatever. I don't think he, he said didn't. His name. He didn't name him as Balon. So how uh, does Reek, because, a serving man, know? But Ramsay, the, because like, he's a trained, because he's trained to know families and shit like that. Because it's Ramsay. Because it's Ramsay. Yeah, I mean, I guess it is one of the seven great. It's one of the great family. Yeah. Why? Well, I, I, I thought what you were saying was why would why would a maybe an actual serving person know this? Because it is one of the seven. Yeah. Great lords. So I'm not saying it's too far, but I was like, wait, would Reek really know just by Theon saying my father who that was? Ramsey would, because yeah. Ramsey is would again, recognize not, the the Kraken and yeah, he's like a Sam, like he he should be as educated as Rob, maybe not quite, but pretty close to as educated as Rob and Harold. Yeah, and shit, fam, family trees. So yeah, if you're no, thinking again, one. you can be like, wait, how did this guy know your father's name? Um, last one I had was Bran when he wakes up from this dream, he's tangled in his sheets. Right, Bran is tangled in his sheets. After summer falls, when he wakes up, he's like it's, it's mentioned that he's like wrapped up, all wrapped, tangled and up, tangled up in his sheets. Okay, and I think Ned wakes up like that in a, in a dream or two, or hmm. wakes up like that once or twice in uh, Game of Thrones. It might be after the Tower of Joy dream. It might be like right after that that he wakes when up when he's when when time traveling Bran's talking to him. But exactly, I wonder if it shows that there's like some weird magic power going on here. It's not just a dream. There's some how the fuck does Bran? It's get, almost like your body's like doesn't. doesn't how does Bran get twisted up? He can't move his lower half. Upper body core strength. He's not moving around. Bran's got wicked core strength and just pulling himself around by these bars all day. I'm sure he does, but I don't know. 
But you're pull, you're drawing the parallel to Ned. I get yeah. you. So that was the only thing I had. Just yeah, like Ned having weird dreams. Like we know Ned. We know Ned had some weird dreams. Like the t- we only really got the. I think we only really got one dream from Ned actually ever in book one, the Tower of the Joy. Tower of Joy. I wish we got more. I mean, we got so many of Ned in the first book. Yeah, and I think so many chapters. It, yeah, there was like over ten chapters. And now that I'm thinking about it, I think uh, when Ned wakes up in a sheet, that might be right after that dream. But it'd just be interesting, like if like what if like a Ned chapter just started off like. He was tangled. He woke up tangled in sheets. Which it might be that too. I, I, I don't remember exactly. It might be like that's exactly how a Ned chapter started. He woke up tangled in his sheets. Maybe after like Jamie stabbed him in the leg. That also might be when he, uh, or not Jamie, or when the horse fell on his leg. That's, that's yeah. Show. That also might be when he has a Tower of Joy dream. Yeah, because he has like a fever. I mean? He's having fever dreams and shit. Like yeah, it'd almost be more interesting if we if a chapter started off like. Ned woke up tangled in his sheets and we don't mm-hmm. we didn't hear anything about the dream and then later yeah. in this book we hear that Bran wakes up the same way after having war dreams T- tangled up into from a war dream and like maybe Ned was warging something yeah and like Bran was warging stuff and not knowing it all the time and I think Arya warged stuff and doesn't yeah. realize it for a while John same thing like maybe it's Ned just was like just Ned was such a never knew it. Ned was such a wet blanket too that he probably didn't even like believe in it you know He's exactly like, yeah I mean nah. or, yeah or, who knows but yeah or he was afraid or he was afraid of him and he didn't want to talk about him. I feel like at, at, at one point, though, like if you know this, if you have this knowledge, at one point you have to pass that on to people so that you're not the only one with this, right? Like it makes sense why he doesn't know anybody about John. He wants to be the only person that knows that. But like if you know, if you know like some secret, like, oh, we're the Starks and we're in charge of mm-hmm. defending everyone from the Night's Watch because we have this special magic power, like at some point you got to be like, okay, kids, Rob, listen up. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, hey, guess yeah. what? I'm going to pass this down to you. So the fact that he we never hear of that, and again, I mean, he didn't have he didn't have an animal to work into. It's not like the other he, thing is maybe what's really interesting is we never get Rob chapters. So maybe that conversation yeah. did happen. You'd think again we we'd hear about it from the Ned chapters that we get, but right. Um, yeah, we're just kind of talking about nothing chapter. Yeah, good we are. good chapter. Not good not chapter. a time to go into though. So short one, which is good. Gonna have a short time to edit it, but we'll be back with you guys for a long one next week in Aria Nine. Winter is coming. You know what happens next one, Jeff? Uh, right. I'm sure the Bolton's show up. Yes, that's at the very end. The whole Arya weasel soup thing. They free all the Stark people with the soup. Yeah, but she doesn't leave. She stays, right? Correct, because Bolton makes her the cupbearer. Yeah. And she doesn't. She at, at, Right away, she doesn't feel comfortable revealing herself. I wonder what Kyle will think. He might think that she'll reveal herself like... As Arya. By Stark. the next chapter, she would have revealed herself. Yeah. Is she outed as a girl? She's outed as a girl, right? Yes. Yeah, everybody already knows she's a girl. Bolton shows up and basically they're like, yeah, she's part of the plan that freed us. And she's like, he's like, you know, do you like animals? And she's like, yes. And he's like, not lions and manticores, it would seem. And she's like, she doesn't say anything. Manticores, Amory Lorch. Uh, uh, and his sigil. His sigil. And um, he's like, how do you like leeches? And she's like, or he's like, are you scared of leeches? And she's like, they're just leeches. And he's like, oh, my squire could learn a thing about that. We'll talk. I'm sure we're going to talk about this in the next one. Yeah. Interesting. I'll, it's one of the things that we can talk to. Uh, we might not be able to tell Kyle. Bolton squire is the Frey that's promised to marry Arya. So the, the person that, Frey, that Bolton's about to re- reference and who is standing right in front of Arya is the person that she's theoretically pr- supposed to be. Yeah, I don't think we should tell him, but that's a cool tidbit to know. I, if we, if, I'll go back and read the cat chapter, and if when Cat said, if she says like, "Oh, Elmar Frey is, is promised is to marry," Bol- and, and, she, we, and he's Bolton's ward, or yeah, that's it. That's the thing is, I don't think they actually name his name, name the squire, or name the squire, not, not ward. They say like Bolton squire, but yeah. I know we'll hear in the future at some point that it's this kid. So it's that's interesting. But he basically, says, "How are you with leeches?" And she's like, "They're just leeches." And he's like, "Oh, my squire could learn learn a thing from you." And he's like, "You're my new uh, cupbearer." That's basically how it ends. But the, yeah. the bulk of the chapter is her doing the Jock and Hagar. She names Jock and Hagar. He's like, you better unname me. And she's like, well, then you got to help me free the Northland. Yeah. I can't wait. I love Arya. It's a, it's a great chapter. So we'll see you guys in the next one. And until then, have a good time. Thanks for listening. Like, subscribe, join the Discord. Lots of great conversations going on there. If you want to talk to Glow... Not that he was ever too big in the Discord. His son's <laughs> somehow, somehow you got, never a, got, you got a shot there. But yeah, he'll pop into this one every once in a while. Until next, until next week, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Winter's coming.